Digimon World 4 is a single and multiplayer dungeon crawler action game released in early 2005 for the GameCube, PlayStation 2, and Xbox. It's not really an important game by any metric, never getting fantastic reviews or becoming super well known or anything. Despite that, I think I dumped like a million hours into this game while I was a kid and I still enjoy it a lot, but I think this game is really interesting in a bunch of ways and we're talking about it at least. In Digimon World 4, you can choose from four different Digimon to start, Agumon, Gilmon, Dorumon, Baby, and Vimon. I'll level with you here, I don't know shit about Digimon honestly. I watched the original Digimon Adventure like 10 years ago a few times with my siblings, and I played this game a ton when I was younger, but that's really about the limit of my Digimon knowledge. I was always way more into Pokemon since before I even learned how to read, and the same was true of all my friends and family. I do like Digimon though, and I will say these four little dudes are adorable. Dormon is always the one I played as, he's amazing. In this game, the character choice matters a bit, I think? Each Digimon has a weapon type they specialize in, although that doesn't mean that they can't use other weapons well. Honestly, I don't know what the difference focusing on your Digimon's preferred weapon type makes, it's never really elaborated on much, and one of many cryptic decisions this game makes. There are six main weapon types, Slash, Bash, Stab, Blunt, Crush, and Shot, along with a magic system as well. There's an MP gauge which allows you to use magic attacks, which start out as shooting magic of a certain element, but as you level up you gain some different magic depending on character as well. Dormon gets a self-heal, which is extremely important if you're playing solo. This game is up to 4 player, which can make it a really fun game to play with a bunch of friends while just running around the dungeons, something like Diablo, although I don't really like Diablo that much, but whatever. The actual combat in the game is pretty simple, just being a hack and slash with a few different moves. The charge and spin moves are pretty niche in usage, so mainly you just press the A button at dudes and try to space yourself out from them, while occasionally blocking with B. Enemies and yourself can sometimes auto-block attacks, which seems to be more likely if you're not in like a recovery animation from doing something else already. It's pretty much random chance it seems, although the likelihood you block is increased the higher your speed stat is compared to your enemy. So if enemies are blocking your attacks a lot, it's because your speed stat is too low compared to them. I could see people taking issue with this system, but I think it's a good way of like making fights extended without necessarily having enemies have really stupidly large HP pools, while rewarding strong knowledge of when to attack or not. I think it's pretty cool. One reason people have a pretty negative view of the game is that, while you can play it on single player, the game is actually mad hard if you're playing by yourself using one of the base Digimon. Early on, most Digimon can 2 or 3 shot you pretty easily, and the only way to heal is through the little pills you can pick up or buy in the shop, called discs. When you're starting out though, you aren't going to have many of these at all, and even then you can only carry 9 of each type of disc at a time, with the higher tier heals costing a ton more money. Basically, you're going to die a lot playing single player. You could say it's the Dark Souls of- Therefore, I'd either recommend finding a save with more Digi Evolutions unlocked at level 1 if you're playing by yourself, or finding a friend or two to play the game with when starting out. Once you understand how to fight effectively though, which is mostly playing at a slightly good distance while backing up when enemies take up more space, you can clear the game solo pretty easy. When I was about 11 years old, I beat the game on normal, hard, and almost had cleared very hard before I just kinda stopped playing, all doing it entirely solo. So it's not too bad once you get a feel for it. It's pretty brutal at times though, and it's a game with a lot of weird gimmicks. The bosses are pretty fun and strong, always threatening to murder you with one or two hits. Playing with multiple people is fun because you can also revive each other using raised discs, so it makes for a ton of fights where it's really tense and you're trying to live long enough to resurrect your friend and heal up, and it also makes rooms of like 4 or 5 enemies a lot more fair. Another notable flaw in Digimon World 4 is how weird the weapon system is. There are corresponding technique stats for every weapon type in the game, including magic types based on what they do, and the higher you get the stat, the better the weapons you can equip. Pretty standard RPG system, honestly. But it gets weird when you look at how to upgrade the tech stat. You can only increase the stat by using the weapon slash magic in battle, and it's completely based on the number of times you use it to attack enemies. Every additional swing or use of magic works towards increasing your tech stat, which is fucking whack because it can get really tedious and it makes it difficult to level up multiple weapons. Worse than that though, it's completely random whether your tech increases or not. You can use it like 20 times in a row on enemies and not get a level, or sometimes you can increase it twice in a row for no reason. So sometimes you play together with someone and they just happen to be way behind you in tech stat and can't upgrade their weapon as fast as you, which then snowballs and makes them fall behind. Super questionable mechanic, especially when it comes to magic. Magic already takes a ton of MP to use, so using it multiple times to level up is pretty difficult when you can only use it like 6 times before your MP bar is just gone. In my playthrough using Doramon from normal to very hard mode, which is just playing through the game almost 3 whole times, I never even got my base magic upgraded to the next tier through all my uses, so it just plateaued super hard and became pointless eventually. I would pretty much only use mana for the self heal, which was really good. There also seems to be some correlation with tech stat increases like right after you level up, like they just happen more often after you level up. I don't know if this is how it works or if there's maybe just like a soft cap on the amount of tech you can get per level, but it's pretty goofy either way. By the way, I hope you don't want to be like a jack of all trades character, because after you get a decently high tech stat in one area, it's almost impossible to get your tech for your other weapons high. 
The game hard locks you out of getting tech increases outside your specialty, which is a big deal since a ton of the damage you deal comes from just getting stronger weapons as your tech goes up. It's a really badly designed system, basically forcing you to specialize in one type and not use your offensive magic past a certain point. Talking more about the dungeons themselves, the aesthetic is honestly pretty good overall. I really dig the music for almost every area. The songs are pretty repetitive, but they're really good loops that I find myself humming a lot. The visuals inside the actual dungeons and not the overworld that connects them are pretty samey per area, but it's fine. The overworld though is always really cool and interesting though. I seriously dig how some of the places look, and they're really satisfying to explore and learn the patterns and secrets of. Some things are super unintuitive though, like the storm train, which you have to use to progress in the desert area, which requires really specific directions to advance. As far as I know, there isn't really any way to tell which directions you're supposed to take without a guide though, and that's the common sentiment I've seen online. Surely there's some way to know, unless you're literally just meant to guess until you get it right, but this puzzle gate kept me when I was a kid until I got access to the internet and just looked it up. The dungeons themselves have a few puzzles and require some navigation, which I found pretty fun to figure out. I could just as easily see them being a bit annoying, though. The enemy design, in my opinion, is pretty good. The goblins are simple little dudes who just serve as good fodder and aren't really pushovers though, while the slimes and Sukumons fight pretty solidly at close and long range, as well as having their own gimmicks, like how the Sukumons turn invincible once you get them down to half health and they do one attack in a faster form before becoming vulnerable again. The giant orc guys move around a lot and have a huge range, which makes them pretty threatening and fun to fight. Pretty much all the enemies have a good level of thought put in their patterns, although they become pretty simple once you know how to deal with them. The bosses have fun patterns and look cool as well, so they're pretty menacing. Another weird thing about this game is that, while there are six weapon types, it really only feels like the slash and bash weapons are really good at all. Each weapon has trade-offs and stats, such as stab having high speed and crush doing more damage, but the slash and bash weapons are not only slightly above average in terms of like damage, but basically in every stat. They have good attack speed, with stab just barely feeling faster, and crush is stronger but not significantly more than slash or bash, not to mention that you can easily do two attacks with slash or bash in the time it takes to do one with crush. Not only that, but just like look at the attack range. I'm using slash here, and it swipes a whole horizontal area across the screen, making it super easy to fight multiple targets compared to like crush, stab, shot, or blunt. I might be somewhat misinformed because I've only really used bash and some slash, but they seem to super outclass the rest of the weapon types in the game. Kind of a bummer, but maybe it's worth trying with the restrictions to use other weapons. The story is nothing to write home about, the plot basically being that a new server and virus showed up in the digital world, which takes over friendly Digimon with a virus, and some evil guys are building an army with them. The aesthetic got me pretty invested to the setting immediately though, and the captain's logs left behind by Leomon on the little log things or whatever are pretty interesting to read as a first responder's POV. Probably the worst thing you can say about the game though, especially for a Digimon game, is that it really fucks up the Digivolving system. There are only total 16 playable Digimon in the game, and you only unlock other forms through very, very specific criteria. Each of the four base Digimon gain the ability to transform into one or two of the other four base Digimon by level up. But to be able to transform into a completely new Digimon other than that though, you have to do some pretty crazy things like beat the game on normal or hard, or beat some of the side missions with super random criteria such as not taking any damage, defeating all enemies, or completing under a certain time. To be frank, very few of these are things that you would be able to do or know without a guide which is just pretty bad game design. The absolute worst part about the Digivolve system though is that when you Digivolve, you turn into level 1 completely with the base stats form of the Digimon you choose. It's kind of just basically starting over the game, but with different stats and specialties. You basically can't Digivolve unless you want to completely restart the game. Why? No one but the most dedicated dudes who have nothing else to play are going to restart the whole game to play as a different character model and have a new set of stats. This is why I'd recommend finding someone's file unlock that has all the playable Digimon unlocked at level 1 if you want to use someone who isn't in the base roster. That's what I did for the footage you're seeing here, and it's really antithetical to a Digimon game to pretty much just lock you out of trying a bunch of different Digimon, but uh, whatever. I think the biggest appeal of the game though is just the charm and pretty fun combat, with a solid multiplayer element that builds onto the fun. I definitely have a lot of nostalgia for it even though I'm not really a Digimon guy, but this game is still really fun. Would I recommend this game to someone though? If you've had my exact life and are exactly me in the year 2010, 100% go for it, it's going to be one of your favorite games. Otherwise, if you're looking for a dungeon crawler with heavy RPG elements based around cute little Digimon, then consider checking it out. There are almost certainly better dungeon crawlers out there, but I'd say this one is worth a shot and pretty fun, although it's kind of non-functional in a bunch of random ways. It still clutches out in the end by being fun, aesthetically pleasing, and just having pretty solid combat and mechanics all around. Dormon is still a baby though.